Let's now discuss the Government Service Insurance System Act of 1997 or Presidential Decree Number 1146 as amended by Republic Act Number 8291. The Government Service Insurance System covers government employees irrespective of employment status who are employed with 1. National Government, its political subdivisions, branches, agencies, or instrumentalities. Number two, government-owned or controlled corporations. Three, government financial institutions with original charters. Four, constitutional commissions. And five, the judiciary. Membership with the government service insurance system is compulsory upon one, all government personnel, whether elective or appointive, who are receiving fixed monthly compensation and have not reached the mandatory retirement age of 65 years. Two, elective officials who will be more than 65 years old at the end of his term, including the period of his re-election without interruption. Three, offic of, uh, officials appointed by the President of the Republic of the Philippines who remain in office after reaching the age of 65. And four, contractual or casual employees who receive fixed monthly compensation and render the required number of working hours for the month. Note those who are not subject to compulsory coverage. One, uniformed personnel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, the Bureau of Fire Protection, and Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. Number two, barangay and sangguniyan officials are not receiving fixed monthly compensation. Number three, contractual employees who are not receiving fixed monthly compensation. And number four, employees who do not have monthly regular hours of work and are not receiving fixed monthly compensation. Remember the classes of membership under this law. One, regular and special. Regular members are those employed by the Government of the Republic of the Philippines, national or local, legislative bodies, government-owned and controlled corporations with original charters, government financial institutions, except uniformed personnel of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the Philippine National Police, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology, and Bureau of Fire Protection, who are required by law to remit regular monthly contributions to the Government Service Insurance System. Special members refer to the constitutional commissioners, members of the judiciary, including those with equivalent ranks, who are required by law to remit regular monthly contributions for life insurance policies to the Government Service Insurance System in order to answer for their life insurance benefits. Number two, active and inactive. An active member refers to a member of the Government Service Insurance System, whether regular or special, who is still in the government service and together with the government agency to which he belongs, is required to pay the monthly contribution. An inactive member refers to a member who is separated from the service either by resignation, retirement, disability, dismissal from the service, retrenchment, or who is deemed retired from the service under the Government Service Insurance System Act of 1997. When is the effective date of membership? Membership with the Government Service Insurance System takes effect on the date of assumption to office by virtue of the original appointment or election. Effect of separation from service. A member who is separated from service continues to be a member and therefore entitled to whatever benefits he has qualified to in the event of any compensable contingency. Remember the Government Service Insurance System benefits. One, separation benefits. Two, unemployment or involuntary separation benefits. Three, temporary total disability benefits. Four, Permanent Partial Disability Benefits 5. Permanent Total Disability Benefits 6. Retirement Benefits 7. Survivorship Benefits 8. 
funeral benefits, and nine, life insurance benefit. Separation benefits. This is available to members who resign or separated or are separated from service. Note the rate of separation benefit. One, members with at least three years but less than 15 years service. It's a cash payment equivalent to 100% of the average monthly compensation for each year of service that he paid contributions, but not less than 12,000 pesos payable upon reaching the age of 60 years or upon separation, whichever comes later. Two, members with at least 15 years of service and below, 60 years old at the time of separation. It's a cash uh, payment equivalent to 18 times his basic monthly pension payable at the time of resignation or separation, plus old age pension equal to the basic monthly pension payable monthly for life upon reaching the age of 60 years. Unemployment or involuntary separation benefits. This is available to permanent employees separated from the service due to abolition of office. The unemployment benefit is in the form of monthly cash payments equivalent to 50% of the average monthly compensation. Note the duration of, in, uh, of entitlement to unemployment or involuntary separation benefits. Members who have made contributions for one, one year, but less than three years, it's two months. Number two, three years, but less than six months, or six years rather, it's three months. Three, six years, but less than nine years, it's four months. Four, nine years, but less than 11 years, it's five months. Number five, 11 years, but less than 15 years, it's six months. To be entitled to unemployment benefit, the member, one, must be a permanent employee at the time of separation. Two, the separation was due to the abolition of his office. And three, has, he has paid the premium contributions for at least one year prior to separation. Temporary total disability benefits. This is available to a member who is momentarily incapacitated to work as a result of impairment of physical or mental faculties, which can be rehabilitated or restored to their normal functions. The temporary total disability benefit is 75% of the current daily compensation for each day of disability for a period not exceeding 120 days in one calendar year. If the disability requires more extensive treatment beyond 120 days, the temporary total disability benefit may be extended by the government service insurance system for a period not exceeding 240 days. To be entitled to the total or temporary total disability benefit, the member, one, must be in the service at the time of his disability, two, if separated, he must have rendered at least three years of service and paid at least six monthly contributions in the 12-month period immediately preceding his disability. And three, he must have exhausted all his sick leave credits. Permanent partial disability benefits. This is available to members who get incapacitated to work for a limited period because of complete and permanent loss of a body part, that is any finger, toe, arm, hand, leg, foot, one or both ears, hearing of one or both ears, sight of one eye, and cases as may be determined by the government service insurance system. The, merman, the, the permanent partial disability benefit consists in cash payment in accordance with a schedule of disabilities prescribed by the government service insurance system. To be entitled to permanent partial disability benefit, the member must, one, be in the service at the time of disability, or two, if already separated from the service, has paid at least 36 months contributions within the five-year period immediately preceding his disability, or has paid a total of at least 180 months contributions 
prior to the disability. Permanent total disability benefits. This is available to members who suffer complete loss of sight for both eyes, loss of two limbs at or above the ankle or wrists, permanent complete paralysis of two limbs, brain injury resulting in incurable in imbecility or insanity, and such other cases as may be determined and approved by the government service insurance system. Note the rate for permanent total disability benefit. One, for disability suffered while in the service by a member who has paid at least 180 monthly contributions, it's a lifetime basic monthly pension plus cash payment equivalent to 18 times his basic monthly pension. Two, for disability suffered after separation from service by a member who has paid 180 monthly contributions or 36 monthly contributions within the five-year period immediately preceding his disability, it's a lifetime basic monthly pension effective from the date of disability. Three, for disability suffered after separation from service by a member who has rendered at least three years of service but has not paid the required minimum contributions, it's 100% of, of his average monthly compensation for each, each year of service but not less than 12,000 pesos. Note the instance of suspension of permanent total disability benefit. Unless the member has reached the minimum retirement age, permanent total disability benefit shall be suspended when he is reemployed or recovers from disability as determined by the government service insurance system or when he fails to present himself for medical examination when required by the government service insurance system. Retirement benefits. This is available to members who have reached the age of 60 years, have rendered at least 15 years of service, and are not receiving a monthly pension benefit from total or permanent total disability. A retiring member has the following options. One, cash payment equivalent to 18 times the, uh, the basic monthly pension plus monthly pension for life, or two, five-year lump sum equivalent to 60 months basic pension. After the lapse of the five-year period, basic monthly pension payable for life. Note a situation of the death of a member while the retirement claims are being processed. One, if the deceased member opted for the five-year lump sum benefit, his legal heirs shall be entitled to the five-year lump sum benefit equivalent to 60 months basic monthly pension. But the survivorship pension shall be granted only after the end of the five-year guaranteed period. Two, if the deceased member opted for immediate pension, his legal heirs shall be entitled to the cash payment benefit equivalent to 18 months of basic monthly pension plus accrued pension up to the date of death of the retiree. Or three, if the deceased member failed to indicate any retirement option, the retirement benefit shall be computed as if he opted for immediate pension. Survivorship benefits. The survivorship benefits of members who died while in active service. One, for members with at least 15 years of creditable service, his primary beneficiaries shall receive the survivorship pension and cash payment equivalent to 18 times the basic monthly pension. In the absence of primary beneficiaries, his secondary beneficiaries shall receive the cash payment equivalent to 18 times the basic monthly pension. And in the absence of secondary beneficiaries, the legal heirs shall receive the cash payment equivalent to 18 times the basic monthly pension. Two, for members with less than 15 years of creditable service, his primary beneficiaries shall receive the cash payment equivalent to 100% of the average monthly compensation for every year of creditable service. Three, 
survivorship benefits of inactive members, primary beneficiaries of inactive members with at least 15 years of creditable service shall receive the survivorship pension only. Primary beneficiaries of inactive members with at least three years but less than 15 years of creditable service and less than 60 years old at the time of death shall receive the cash equivalent equivalent to 100% of the average monthly compensation for every year of creditable service but not less than 12,000 pesos. Primary beneficiaries of inactive members with less than 15 years of creditable service but at least 60 years old at the time of separation and have received the corresponding separation benefit shall not be entitled to survivorship benefits. However, if the member has not received yet his separation benefit within four years after his or her separation, the primary beneficiaries shall receive the cash benefit equivalent to 100% of the inactive member's average monthly compensation for every year of creditable service but not less than 12,000. The survivorship benefits shall be paid as follows. One, when the dependent spouse is the only survivor, he shall receive the basic survivorship pension. Two, when only the dependent children are the survivors, they shall be entitled only to the dependent children's pension equivalent to 10% of the basic monthly pension for each dependent child not exceeding five, counted from the youngest and without substitution. Three, when the survivors are the dependent spouse and the dependent children, the dependent spouse shall receive the basic survivorship pension for life or until he remarries or cohabits, and the dependent children shall receive the dependent children's pension. Four, when the dependent spouse and dependent children are already receiving the basic survivorship pension, independent children's pension respectively, any subsequent death, emancipation, or disqualification of any one of them shall not entitle the other beneficiaries to the forfeited share. 5. In the absence of a natural guardian, the guardian de facto of the dependent children, as well as the physically or mentally incapacitated dependent children, must file a petition for guardianship to be able to claim the survivorship benefits on behalf of the dependent children. 6. When the pensioner dies within the five-year period after receiving the five-year lump sum, the survivorship pension shall be paid only after the end of the said five-year period. However, filing of claim of survivorship benefit should be done before the end of the fourth-year prescription period. Remember the conditions which will bar entitlement to survivorship benefits. Except for dependent children, the beneficiaries are not entitled to the survivorship benefits if immediately preceding the death of the member or pensioner, one, they are engaged in gainful occupation or business in, uh, with income at least equal to the minimum compensation of government employees, two, the surviving spouse and the deceased member were not living together as husband and wife, or three, they are not or they are receiving rather any other pension from the government service insurance system or another local or foreign institution or organization. Four, in the case of the dependent spouse, payment of the basic survivorship pension shall discontinue when he or she remarries, cohabits, or engages in common law relationship. Funeral benefits. The funeral benefit is intended to help defray the expenses incident to the burial and funeral of the deceased member, pensioner, or retiree. It is available in case of death of an active member, an old age or disability pensioner, or a member with more than 15 years of creditable service who has been separated from the service but entitled to future separation or retirement benefits. This benefit is payable to any qualified individual in accordance with the following order of priority. One, legitimate spouse. Two, legitimate child who spent for the funeral services. Or three, any other person who can show incontrovertible proof 
that he shouldered the funeral expenses of the deceased. Life insurance benefit. The government service insurance system, life insurance, is compulsory and available to all employees except for the members of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police.